Right. I right, was going to do a brief talk on hacking biometric security. Um, the problem is that trying to condense even just attacks on fingerprint locks into half an hour would be completely impossible. Um, so, what with everything happening on site as well, helping out with stuff, I haven't had time to do lots of fancy slides or anything. So we decided that if you is your to, mic on? Yeah. Can you better. hear him out the back? We decided it would be better. <coughs> Again, we're brilliant. Yes. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. Right. <laughs> yeah, that felt flat. That was Warren's joke. Right. Biometric security. It's impossible to condense hacking just, even just fingerprint sensors into half an hour. So I decided that it was absolutely pointless to just sort of go, this is the false acceptance ratio, this is the true acceptance rate, blah, blah, blah. Because it would fly straight over most people's heads. We have the last member of our panel about to join us. Another Dutchie, for those of yes. you who are fond of the Dutch. Apparently have something far more important to do. <coughs> Come on, Rob, grab a chair. Um, so we decided instead to be interrupted by Warren. My apologies. Yes. Shut up a second, please. So, basically, we decided to do a Q&A question, answering questions about security. So you can ask about a biometric fingerprint lock if you want, and you'll get an answer. Um, but basically, questions on safes, biometrics, um, cars, burglary, how to prevent such a thing, yeah, all these all things. Sort of thing. Anything. That's prevention of burglary, not how to burgle. Well, you could ask, but you won't get an answer. <coughs> yes. You'll always get an answer. It, it, it most likely be, be a comedy want. answer, and it is unlikely to be the one you want. So, as we have ringers in the audience already, would anybody like to start with an interesting question that we can answer and so on? Right, we have a runner. He's very slow, I'd like to point out. Um, because the camp has to include everyone, we have to include him as well. Hiya. Hi. I understand that recently there's been uh, Bluetooth locks being developed that you can put in your, your door and <coughs> use your phone to sort of open the lock. Mm -hmm. Has there been any research done in terms of the security risks behind those locks? Or? I did some. All I right, did uh, some research. Um, it's a, the London meeting of the Master Locksmiths Association, a company called Salto, turned up with their, um, their Euro locks, the standard locks you'd um, expect on a UPVC door. And they have cloud locking, and um, I don't think they utilise the, the Bluetooth as much. It's all done over GSM, GPRS. <clears throat> and so I've obtained one, um, and with the help of the London Hackspace guys, stripped it down to its bare nothings to see exactly how it's all implemented. It's currently very, very, very secure to the point that I've, I haven't the faintest idea how to go about breaking it. And so that one is particularly good. Okay. Oh, brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> the locking portion is about four millimetres long, and that has full authentication inside, which is embedded in the lock. If you change any the external portions, it doesn't work because they're linked together. It's really quite funky. So I haven't seen this, but is there a <coughs> hardware override for this? Uh, no. That seems like a really bad idea. So yes. when your internet goes down, so does your door lock. Or yes. if your phone dies, you and can't get And they fail in. secure. Or power. Very secure. They're also on Heathrow Airport. And so let's hope their power never goes down. Any terrorists disregard the last portion. Uh, Heathrow Airport is fine. It's fine. Don't worry. So if we have a fire at Heathrow. Yes. And they kill the power. Yes. To the best of my knowledge, they are dead. In that I've had them apart, and there's no way to... They're battery-operated, by the way. So you can physically go along with your um, my fair doodah and swipe it. But if that fails, or if some enterprising person kicks the front off, you are up a certain creek without a paddle, as the only one that will ever work is the one that's been smashed with a hammer. They're not available separately, so you buy a whole new lock. And you can't even keep the old bits for spares. So Which they fail fairly easily, and there's no way to get around it if there's no power? Um, you can, um, as with all locks, drill for the cam, I suppose. So you can take all the middle out and try and activate the cam directly. From a user point of view? No, yeah, not okay. at all. So to the best of my knowledge, knowledge, I'd like to point out. Which, which microphone do they use? Um, the one that's not broken. Okay. The late one. <laughs> to the, again. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> To, to return to the you question don't have a mic. Moment. You're here for eye candy. <laughs> to, to return to the question for a moment, the actual Bluetooth stack, the encryption's been broken on it, so anything that says, oh yeah, Bluetooth, we're using that because it's secure, they're just idiots who haven't kept up, so pure Bluetooth authentication is not secure. So, um, 
Yeah. So there have been several uh, Kickstarters recently as well. Uh, a lot of companies are making bicycle locks working over Bluetooth. There's one company that has a lock you can open via your mobile, and there's also some kind of tapping code you can use. That's a Kickstarter, right? Yeah. Yeah, a Kickstarter. But, but the, the problem I mostly have with those locks is they tell a lot about the utility, like, oh, you can use your phone, oh, you can give your friends tokens, and they can <coughs> borrow your bike and stuff. But they rarely focus on the mechanics inside the lock. They maybe, say, yeah, maybe they do focus on it, but, but they don't. But we don't see it. They don't tell. Yeah. They don't tell us what's inside. If it's like, um, if you've been at the lock making village, you could have seen the safe with the solenoid, where the solenoid was like heavy enough. The solenoid's there. So we, Go on, Nigel, whack it open. <coughs> Let's get a quick show of hands. Who's been to the lock picking village? Did everyone open something? That wasn't a. Yeah, I should. You can all shout if out. If you've opened something, yeah, feel free. Good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Who didn't see the safe? Probably quite a few of you. This is a branded safe from a UK manufacturer. Obviously yeah, yeah. it was made in China by the lowest bidder. Um, it's actually quite a good example of this. The keypad's relatively secure. A lot of the easy bypasses are gone. You know, They put a fairly decent override lock on it so that you at least have to have a pick or this is essentially the same bit. as every hotel you've safe you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some really good hotels safe now. But this this is like all those ones that you see sort of fifty quid in the wholesalers or in the shop and you go, Oh yeah, brilliant, it's got a keypad. It must be secure, it's electronic. Yeah, hold my mic. <laughs> he means business now. <laughs> Demonstration effect. <laughs> One of the UK's best safe crackers, by the way. That was a cheap parlor trick. Please don't applaud the monkeys. And of course, um, if you walk as a non-invited guest into a hotel room and you see a box like that, well, you don't have to search the whole room, do you? Because all the good stuff is in there. It's basically a systems failure um, because nobody, I mean, Yale must have plenty of people on the staff who know locks inside out. And yet they never handed it to a bunch of people like us or, you know, I'm a training locksmith, one's a training locksmith. Train chimp. We're trained idiots. Yeah. <coughs> but also, some Good of them have chain. data logging as well, don't they? Those safes have data logging on some of them. Yep. That yep. won't have triggered anything. So, you know, this is, this is something's been stolen out of the safe. You look at the electronic lock and you go, aha, right, the user with code number 63 was the last person in here. Get him in here. Please go, where were you? And he goes... I was like at home and asleep in bed, and they go, "Well, you opened that safe last." And he goes, "Uh, no." Well, that's because someone's managed to figure out its combination or whatever. It's locked. But no. The attack with the solenoid there, where I just bashed the top of that and opened it. There's no electronic record of that, so it's a complete systemic failure. Um, one of the aspects of biometrics is a similar thing. A lot of the locks are made by some guy has a great idea. The Bluetooth door lock's exactly the same. Um, there was a talk in Tent B yesterday. Um, what was it actually called? Uh, I believe it was SIM card or SIM save, something like that. It was uh, the concept of taking uh, people's fingerprints and using it as a, a unique identifier for medical records. Did anyone see that talk? Where's our runner? Or speak louder. We've just sat down. SIM print. SIM print. So SIM safe, close enough. Yes. Yeah, SIM print. It, it's a cunning pun on the fact they use a SIM card in a GSM mobile phone and a Bluetooth stack reader for the fingerprint reader, and then it's all magic after that, apparently. Um, <coughs> the fact that they're using Bluetooth to go from the fingerprint reader to the phone, then they're using the GSM network and they're using Android mobile phones to link the lot together. Well, in yeah, defense, we, all, we all know all of those technologies are secure, don't we? So, In their defense, that technology is not meant for uh, prescription drugs, but it seems like one of those things where it will work once, no one, will, no one will investigate why it works, and then it will end up being in different fields where we'll have issues. It's a great idea. I just think that, uh, again, they probably need to speak to some people who would look at it and go, well, okay, it's a great idea, but you might want to think about this and this and this. Um, for example, the lack of key revocation on a fingerprint is an issue for everybody. You leave prints everywhere you go. Once the prints are in the wild, you can't eradicate them. Your stuff just on well, sticks on the internet. It, it'll hurt. They grow back, mate. 
the only way you can Not do to it. chop your fingers off. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you're doubly screwed because you can't even open your door with your fingers, can you? <laughs> you have your fancy <coughs> biometric lock and you've got to stick your nose on it. This is actually the... Other parts. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually the interesting part where yeah, this is actually the interesting part where the software kind of needs the locks, like hardware. Um, if you if you have a key app or something like that, uh, you can actually publish your source code, have people investigate it, look for flaws, look for wrongly implemented encryption uh, principles. It's a bit harder with the hardware because you actually need to physically give somebody your lock, ship it somewhere, have them examine it, and it makes it so much more. Uh, a part that not so much gets overlooked, but gets ignored because it's way too, well, it's time difficult. costly, it's expensive. Yeah. It's costly, it's expensive, it's a headache to actually manage it, send them out, get actual feedback and reapply that. So and, and God forbid if they find something. I mean, if, 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 you oh, have, yes. if you're running software, if you're writing software, you have software engineers, yeah. rarely. So if, if, the, if somebody finds a flaw, you grab those same software engineers and they rewrite, get a patch where well, you know where that goes. But if they, if some, some nerds or, or they hire us and they, they, they find something wrong in the hardware, it's basically start from scratch. Yeah, build a new one. Build a complete new one. So uh, a any money you invested initially, yep, rinse and repeat. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be a, a matter of sort of plausible deniability if you don't let people attack your lock and you do not know of any flaws existing, you yep. put it on the market. And if somebody else finds it out later on, you can just be like, yeah, that's how it goes. If you find out beforehand, then you're responsible for making a, well, fixing the problem. But I'm, I would say every manufacturer is responsible for putting out a proper product, but they don't look at it similarly. Yeah, and there's no definition of proper. So if, if yeah. you no, think about some hardware that's secure and well, you, you could put on, we security tested it. Well, there's also no definition for security test. Yeah. So I go out and ask uh, my <laughs> baker, he's like, could you look at this lock and try to open it for about five minutes? And if he fails, and he probably will, because he's doing other stuff, I can put on the package that it's been tested by a professional, because mm -hmm. he, he has a job. Yeah, but, but he as you say, there are different levels of ability. Give it to study. us, we'd most like, between us, We'll crack it. it. Might take a while, but we'll get that. The well, manufacturers have got know, a lot better. They no longer say pick proof, it's pick resistant. Yeah, now. it's yeah, pick resistant. It and bump well, resistant. Because, I mean, we know quite a lot of locks, and, um, well, and we, we get questions a lot like, what is a unpickable lock? It doesn't exist. I think every lock can be picked. But for some locks, we just haven't figured out how to yet. Mm. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's there is no such thing as 100% security. Plus you've got the length of time as well and the amount of tools you need. I mean, some locks, you might need four hours of uninterrupted access. In practical terms, nobody's going to sit and pick that. Yeah. In particular, if you've left the back door open or the windows there. But, or you know, door. Yeah, there's, yeah, there are locks that, in practical terms, nobody's ever going to sit and pick, like your front door lock. There's also the obscurity aspect example. of things. Um, one of the French manufacturers will only sell the lock with the new door. Um, this means that it's been very, very difficult, for the, particularly the Fichet 3D I'm thinking of here. Yeah. So it's been practically impossible. Chance. Yeah, Fichet 3D. Yeah. And how much they are for us to buy enough of them to mess about with them. Just because you can get one lock open doesn't mean you can get another seemingly identical lock open. So you need a reasonable size selection to be able to say with some degree of confidence, yeah, well, we can do those. Or make a tool for it. So yeah, if exactly. you want to make a tool for a lock that you've just bought wholesale, you know, even getting a locksmith's discount from them, it still comes in at over 600 pounds. That's a one lock which you intend to break. Unless the manufacturer's on, on your side and saying, yes, here's 10 locks, have a go, tell us what you think. It's not gonna happen until they reach the second hand market. So when the manufacturer determinedly decides to try and prevent that from happening to keep their security, it ruins it for everybody. And then when we do get it, it's trivial to get past and you just think, well, that's a shame. Mm. In all fairness, there are some manufacturers that do come to us. We're not doing bad yeah. for one question so far. <laughs> <laughs> I assume there are more questions. I hope we'll so, one forever. We've only got so much we can ramble about. Yeah. Do people have questions? questions. Should we just go to another no, question? No, basically, we, we that's a terrible line. line. Go on. You man there. Be a good question now. Yeah, please be a good question. Well, I don't know about that, but... Um, 
I was at the lock picking village yesterday and got into my first few locks. Could you recommend any resources to go further? What? What, to, to open more locks? Yeah, so I understand buy some more locks, play with them, yeah. Yeah. get used to those. But what I used to do when I... Sorry? Yeah, come, come to a tool point. meeting. Where are you based? Milton Keynes. There, there's loads. I mean, there are hack spaces and so on. However, there are massive, massive online communities where you can speak to like-minded people, sometimes even him, when he's in the mood, me, him, or everybody. You can sit and chat, but the, the first thing you need to do is practice. So I assume you have a pick set? Yes. All right. So did you buy one of the pick sets that we sell? I did, yes. So yeah, we all know what picks you have and so on. Practice with us, and then practice at home, pick the locks. The best learning is to struggle, and struggle, and struggle. And then one day it'll click. And then you move on to the second lock, shout open. which you struggle. <clears throat> and after a while, you build up um, a repertoire of locks you can pick, and then you'll find one that refuses to pick. No matter what you do, it will not work. And at that's the point you've got, to, you've got experience, you've got practice, you've got a question to ask. I have this lock, I'm struggling to pick it. You know, you speak to anyone, and somebody else will have picked that. And they'll talk you through it, might even show you a video, give you a tip. And at that point, you're building up your experience and your repertoire of locks, and then you'll turn into us. You'll be a geek, you'll try and find a lock that you can't pick, or particularly locks that other people you look up to and admire struggle with. I love getting locks you can't pick, and the same, because now it's like, I'll do it if it kills me. And you get extra motivation, and after a while, you, you wake up one morning and you think, shit, that's a lot of locks. <coughs> he is right. Especially Everything. when you keep buying new ones onto the market just to try and break them. So yeah. To start with, the big thing, especially for me, because I mean, these guys are locksmiths, I started as a hobbyist big thing that kept me going was community. So I was big into the, the forums and IRC and things like that, where it would be constant competitions, there would be locks going around. If you're in an area where you're interested in it and there's no one else around but you've got a hack space, just start it. Put a mail around, get locks, go to a locksmith and explain what you're doing. If you're nice enough, they're generally okay. And sometimes that takes a while so to get a, a, a good relationship with your local lucky. Oh yeah, the first time I went into mine, I walked in with a uh, padlock. I may or may not have meant to have, but it had been thrown away, so legally it was fine. He called me a thief, he called me a liar. He took my money for the key for it, then get me ca carried on. From there, I got to know a few of the guys, explained what I was interested in. A couple of months ago, um, they were handing me bags full of locks. If you go in and explain what you're doing, if you keep going in and being honest with them, don't try and lie and say, oh, you want the brass or something like that. If they're a decent locksmith and they're interested in what they're doing, they'll see that you're interested in it and you've, you've got the right mindset, eventually you'll find one that will hand you brass for scrap value. At that point you can get as many locks as you want. There, there are some old school locksmiths who will just tell you to go do one, but mm -hmm. a lot of guys these days know that there is a hobby scene out there and they are quite happy because they're part of it as well. You know, I don't see myself as a professional locksmith, not a hobbyist. I am both. We don't see as a professional locksmith either. It's fine, Nigel. <laughs> yeah, Nigel's not really a professional. No, I'm so good at it, just do it for free, yeah. <laughs> what also helps uh, if you want to uh, uh, have a shitload of locks is tell everybody you have a new hobby. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, Hackspace mailing lists are the best way to go. You yeah, and friends, 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 family, friends, families, everybody. Uh, yeah. Everything. You'll yeah, get everybody. them. And you maybe convince them uh, and ask them how much did you pay for your lock. And if they go like, oh, I bought m my front door lock for a fiver, and explain that that's the wrong idea. And if they follow your advice, you have a new luck. Yeah. <laughs> and eBay's a good way. I mean, there's, there's a big enough community. So four or five years ago, there wasn't really. It's really growing. There are locksmiths out there and hobbyists that are st selling on eBay um, locksmiths and locks bought starter sets. And you can pick up locks for about a pound, pound fifty per thing. You have to buy them in sort of 10 or 12, but it's a good way to get like a small collection to start with. You can take a few apart. You can, if you've got a few locks that you can repin, you're fine. Can you recommend anywhere to get terminology, those kind of things? Online. Yeah, yeah <coughs> forums. There are <coughs> limitless guides. Come and see us at the village. Or email us. We'll sort you out. And a shitload of YouTube videos also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. YouTube videos are yeah. a big one. Um, you can't always trust what you can see some on there. Some are quite good. But some if you're just looking at terminology, uh, Skylar Town. Yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah, a Skylar Town did a 24 part video series where he goes through everything. The guy is obsessed with locks to the point where he makes us look casual. Speak for yourself. Wow. There's, uh, there's also a good resource that's uh, maintained by Datagram. He does, uh, like, he looks at the internals of locks, and it's called Lockpick Wiki. Um, it's basically a wiki that 
Wiki and a couple of other guys maintain. It's yeah. mainly him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is a Wiki. Yeah. And it, it, it just contains a lot of the explanation of what it is. So it, all, it will also mention like this type of lock is susceptible to these kinds of attacks with links to the attacks and then you just go on. Um, yeah. Lockpicking 101 yeah, forum, yeah. of course, uh, the tool site, uh, especially the US tool site, uh, has uh, the, the complete uh, slide deck that we normally use at the, if, the, if we have a lockpick village, yeah. mostly in America. Th that's way, it is huge set, uh, I don't know. It, if you can use a mouse. Uh, it's it's yeah. silly yeah. huge. It, if you know enough to use a mouse to get to the slides on there, you yeah. can understand how a lock works from those slides. If you, know. you find, if you uh, go on YouTube and search for DEFCON, uh, Stephen Olaham, he has what seven or eight, nine hours worth of footage yeah. of just him talking about. Locks. There's an hour talk where he just talks about picks. He goes through the basics. He's probably one of the better speakers, if not one of the best speakers on lock picking. Yeah. He's, he's better than us. <coughs> right, oh, as we oh God, rapidly yeah, the guy's entertaining. I mean, we're rapidly running out of, out of time now. So, Thanks unusually you. for us, we can uh, answer some questions quite quickly. And then there is a part two, by the way, with yet more questions in stage B. It's closer, 6 p.m. stage B. It's all closer in. We'll answer it. Far more questions shortly. So come on. So some, we have uh, some quick five questions. minutes to go. So <coughs> well, we'll take you to the front yeah, as you're right, at the front. Go on. go on. And then we're going over that side. So on these online communities, I assume there's also attracts a lot of people that are, for some dubious reasons, interested in lockpicking. How, um, how does the community of ethical lockpickers deal with that? Fastest way to answer it, DBC Locksmiths is um, based in the UK, lots of hobbyists, and every month or so, somebody will come on with a close-up photo of a vending machine lock. Uh, how do I open this? I usually answer um, in somewhat of a comedy fashion. Once you start picking locks, you know what other lock pickers ask. You know the terminology they use. You know the kind of locks they pick. If the first question you ever ask online is, how do I open this van lock, which is only ever used on vending machines, it's instantly apparent what you're trying to do. And so the answer usually is you obtain the key from the vending machine company and open it with that or pay for your you know, sweets, whichever. <coughs> but so a bit similar to the digital hacking where people, yeah. that's the first post, post how do I hack Facebook? Um, mm. yeah. It's all obvious. It, it's very comparable. <coughs> we have questions. There you go, stripey shirt, man. The, the other factor is that criminals generally do not pick locks. Um, the closest to the sort of thing that you see in the movies is people who do things like tiger teaming and uh, penetration testing. So they're probing physical security yeah. with permission to see whether someone else could get in in the same way. And, uh, and agencies. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the three letter agencies. They're the only people who realistically pick locks. And even the three letter agencies tend to cheat because they'd rather just take a photo of your keys from five miles away with a satellite and okay. turn up with a key. Go on, mate, with your room, check house. shit. Yeah, so just building on that point, how do you pick, you know, Facebook and stuff? How do you what, sorry? No, sorry. Um, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> um, yeah, so Bluetooth, I, I kind of missed a bit about Bluetooth. Is that insecure now? The, the Bluetooth... Yeah. It's a very, very short answer. The, 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 the Bluetooth stack has been cracked open, as far as I know. The encryption is out there. So I don't know about Bluetooth LTE, which is the newest one. Is that, is yeah, that there's your answer. Well? It's yeah. all cracked. I, I, was pretty sh I was pretty sure it was wide open now. So. And it's gone. There you go. Yeah, right. So we've got more lock questions while we've, uh, while we've got you all assembled. There we yeah. go. Um, you're, you all obviously know your stuff inside out. What's the, well, what's the biggest red face moment where you oh, maybe, maybe you've rocked you up to a lock and um, <laughs> spent an hour on it and then figured out it was unlocked yeah, in the first minutes. place? I've locked myself <laughs> inside my own van. <laughs> I've been I've locked out twice yeah. now since I've started this, and I, I tell everyone don't carry picks, and I follow my own advice. That's two windows I've had to replace now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I once spent three hours lock picking a certain lock, and just just mentioned like, oh yeah, there's a special pin in the front, and he has he had seen me lock pick it for three hours and didn't tell me anything. Steep learning curve, nothing wrong with that. Scumbag move. <laughs> Actually, the first time I went to a lock picking conference, surrounded. A I've only been into it 18 months. Absolutely wide-eyed, brilliant to be here. People I've been watching on YouTube for 18 months. Amazed I was there. Um, about 20 of them watched me try and get through a door which was unlocked but had a stiff handle for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a proud moment and one I'd love to forget but gets raised quite often. Well, Nigel, you must have warrant moments. They're all classified, mate. Well, oh, no. <coughs> um, yeah, I once having... About the kindness of my heart, made a key for the customer and 
done some stuff so we could actually do the job and it would go ahead, blah, blah, blah. I then shut the sliding door on my van, which locked itself, and I was standing there going, shit, the keys are in the ignition. Mm. So that was good. Um, <coughs> it only took me a few minutes to get back in, but yeah. I was quite replaced. One um, quick one from me on a warrant. Um, I think it was one of your warrants, in fact, <laughs> in Birmingham. Um, turned up, I've got all the gear, very little idea. Um, I'm picking the front door of a, a row of um, terrace houses, about six or seven in the row, picking away, picking away. The warrant officer, the engineer, both very quiet, not really saying a lot, not giving me any aggravation. And after about, I would say, 45 minutes, I said, lads, I said, um, I'm struggling here. I'm going to have to go around the back. Not a problem, mate. No problem at all. Walk around the back. There is no back door. It's just not there at all. <laughs> so I, <clears throat> I walk through. I open up. He said, yeah, but we were here last week. We just thought we'd see how long it was going to take you to try all the doors. <laughs> that was uh, <clears throat> relatively red-faced, I think. That's about it, really, for red face moments. So we have no more, do I, we? I've as got, we're professionals. I've got, I've got no, dozens, none at all. Um, I, I, the first rule is check the door's not locked before you start picking the lock. Um, I spent. The warrant officer had pushed the handle, therefore, I thought that he had checked to see whether the door ha was actually locked or not. So imagine my surprise when, after I'd picked the lock for 20 odd minutes, I was going, this is, you know, this is just rubbish. I literally stood up and pushed down on the handle door just opened. I was like, yeah, I've done a very similar thing and I'm going to go as a hobbyist, don't pick locks you rely on and don't pick locks you don't own. But a friend of mine was locked out. So after about 20 minutes at one in the morning of trying to open this damn lock, it wouldn't go. I leaned forward and leant on the handle just because I was tired. The whole thing swung open. Happens all the time. Yeah. Car locks in particular, BMW boots. <coughs> some car locks pick clockwise, some pick anti-clockwise. Um, and some locks pick easier in one direction than the other. So BMW boot locks, you generally pick to locked a little bit and then spin them backwards <coughs> to open. However, if you pick them basically to almost unlocked, but usually plug spin it, which spins the lock in the wrong direction, it fires it quite firmly into deadlocked and then snaps the little tab off the back so it won't ever <laughs> unlock again. <coughs> so the, just in case anybody's uh, interested, what you have to do is then get in the driver's door, open the passenger door, take the seats off, drill a hole through, through the steel bulkhead, fish the keys out, mention to the customer that you're in, put the back seat on and drive off. <laughs> <coughs> or pay out of your own pocket to have his steel bulkhead repaired. You only ever do that once, or if you meet three times, before you learn to you know, be gentle. And I, mean that, that, I believe that wraps it up. Because, uh, we're done. We've done our time now. <coughs> Mm -hmm. For change. About one hour <coughs> will we will be in B. Forty B. minutes. B. Yeah. B. B. In forty minutes. Yeah. So if um, you have any questions, spread the word. Come think back. about it, and uh, we'll answer those as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>